Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you a video this time on Synthetic Division. Um, so you probably learned Synthetic Division in your pre-calculus course. Uh, maybe when you were solving uh, cubics and you used the Rational Roots Theorem or what my students learn, the Integral Roots Theorem. And one of the things that you have to be aware of that is that Synthetic Division has its limited, limited application. So it's only going to work if you have a linear binomial, so something like, in this case I wrote x minus a, so it could be x minus 2, x plus 2, things like that. So it's really important to keep that in consideration that if you don't have a linear binomial, you're going to have to use actually long division. So I'll probably make another video on that uh, upcoming. Uh, another application of synthetic division is when you're finding the oblique asymptote as well. Alright, so let's have a look at this example. And uh, I do my synthetic division like most people. I make my the lines. Then I start by taking the coefficients that are in front of my terms here, my variables. And I make sure that first of all that my uh, variables are in descending power, so x cubed, x squared, x, and then nothing. So you have, if anything is missing, if I'm missing like an x squared, I'd have to put a zero in when I write it out here. So I have 3, negative 4, negative 9, negative 1. And then what I'm going to do is whatever this number is up here, so it's x minus 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that. It's going to be 3 over here. So instead of having the negative 3, it's going to be 3. Because actually 3 is the solution. So whatever we would put in here, that would make x equals 0. So that would be what we'd use over here for synthetic division. So what we do first, we drag down our 3. That goes to the bottom here. So we end up with 3. Then we're going to take these two numbers, and then we're going to multiply them. So we have 3 times 3 is 9. And then what we need to do with these two numbers is we need to add them. So negative 4 plus 9 is 5. And then we'll multiply the 3 and the 5. So we'll multiply those again. So that's 15. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're just going to add these. So negative 9 plus 15 is 6. And then 3 times 6 is 18. Negative 1 plus 18 is 17. So what I have here, that 17 represents my remainder. And what I have here actually is my, uh, what I get left with. So that's actually a polynomial quadratic and it's actually 3x squared plus 5x plus 6. So when I divide this guy, this cubic here, by x minus 3, I'm left with this, with a remainder of 17. So that's a, you know, a typical example of using th synthetic division. Let's do another one. So the reason why I chose this one is because, if you notice here, we're missing an x term. So I drop down x cubed, x squared, I'm missing the x term, and then I have the negative 4. So again, we'll make our little line. And then I'm going to take the factor here, negative 2. And then I have, for the x cubed, 2. Then I have x squared, 7. So I'm missing the x term, so I need to make sure I put a 0 in. It's really important. And then minus 4. So let's do this the same thing. Let's drag our 2 down. So we have 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 7 plus negative 4 is 3. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. 0 plus negative 6 is negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 6 is 12. And then we'll add these two together. Negative 4 plus 12 is 8. So what I'm left with is 2x squared plus 3x minus 6 with a remainder of uh, 8. So there you go. Typical, two typical uh, synthetic division examples. Now I want to give you guys a heads up about another theorem that might come in handy. Um, which is a way we can avoid using th synthetic division, which is the remainder theorem. Uh, if we're just looking for the remainder, maybe perhaps it's a multiple choice question, or if um, we're trying to see if something's a solution or a factor of a, of a cubic or a quartic or something like that, all we need to do is sub in that value. So when a polynomial is divided by x minus a, so like we did in the, in the other ones, the remainder is p of a. So if I wanted to find the remainder of, say, this guy right here, I could sub negative 2 into this guy, just like that, 
then I can use my calculator and I should get the remainder here 8. So it's really useful. If this remainder is 0, then what it means is that this would be a factor of that. So, you know, it'd be a solution of the actual function. So, if you get a question like this, which I gave on a test this year, um, a really simple multiple choice when you look at it, because all I have to do is use the remainder theorem, but when you have something like this, x to the 21, a lot of my students start writing out synthetic division and they have to go 3 and then they have to the 20 so it would be 0 and then a bunch of other zeros trying to make their way all the way down to 7 which is really not practical when all they had to do was this p of negative 1 so 3 to the negative 1 to the 21 plus 4 the negative 1 is 7 minus 2 so that's going to be negative 3 minus 4 minus 2 so that's going to be minus 9 so really important to uh, differentiate when you want to use synthetic division and when you can avoid using th synthetic division. So I hope this helped guys. Uh, good luck. See you guys in class.